don't know. I just, I think this is, I just look ugly. <laughs> oh my God, this is being recorded. <laughs> I know. Hi. We'll just go with it. Whatever. You should know what are this channel. Honestly, we're slowly declining in terms of how much I care about my appearance. Oh, so. <laughs> I'm oh. filming something. It's okay. It's all good. Do you want to say hi? <laughs> what is it for? It's for the apartment oh. hunting video. <laughs> hi. <laughs> If you can see her in public. No, <laughs> I know. no, I have my glasses on. They won't recognize oh, me. Oh, true. She's in disguise when she's around. <laughs> you see her around. <laughs> hey guys, it's Tia. Today, I'm going to be filming my apartment hunting video, as you can probably guess by the title. And I'm really excited. Honestly, I've been wanting to put this video out for a minute. I actually already filmed this video, but I... Sounded like a man. Because I got back from work and I was... My voice had been used, um, <laughs> and so I was really tired. My energy was super low, and it was just not a fun video. I just didn't like it, so I'm refilming it. If you haven't already, make sure to follow me on Instagram. My Instagram is teeny tiny Tia. If you want to keep up with me, I usually also post when I'm posting YouTube videos or my life in general. I don't know, if you're interested in me and what I'm about and what I do, follow me on Instagram. If not, you certainly don't have to. <laughs> so let's go ahead and get started. So basically I've broken down the apartment hunting process into five steps and this way it'll make it a little bit easier to go through step by step and explain what y'all should be doing at what point in time and some best strategies and practices. The first step is discovering your preferences, deciding what's important to you in an apartment or wherever you wanna live, whether it be a townhouse or a condo or a house, figuring out what your preferences are, how much you're willing to pay for rent, how far away or close do you wanna to be to school, what kinds of modes of transportation you'll usually be taking, whether that be the bus, so checking to make sure there's bus lines, or if you're taking your bike, so if there's a lot of good bike parking, that would be important to you. If you plan on driving a lot, if the parking is expensive, or if there's a lot of parking, etc., etc. Another thing to think about is whether or not you want a washer or dryer in your unit, in your actual apartment, or if you're okay with doing laundry in a laundry room. A lot of apartments come with the option to live in a townhouse, which is two stories, versus a flat, which is one, so deciding whether you prefer one or the other, or if it doesn't matter to you. As you start apartment hunting, it's really important to be organized with your information because there is so much information uh, and there's so many different apartments. So I really recommend either using Google Docs or just having a piece of paper that you write all your information down on. I would recommend Google Docs just because it's easy to put in links for websites and insert photos and stuff like that. But as you do your research, as you discover your preferences, this is a great way to stay organized. And as you continue to find new apartments and talk to different people, it's a really great way to keep your list updated so you're not totally overwhelmed and you don't forget about certain apartments. Step two is research. I know for Davis anyway there are so many apartments here because we are so close to a college campus and this town is very UC Davis centered so there are tons of apartments and it can be kind of overwhelming to decide which one you want to live in or where to even begin your search. So research is really important because you want to see what kinds of ratings certain apartments have, if there's apartments that have particularly had issues in the past or students don't really like them, or if there's really well-rated apartments that a lot of Davis students flock towards. It's important to do your research, whether it be online, asking friends like upperclassmen who are already living in apartments and already have experience living in apartments, using Wildfire. I've mentioned the app before. Wildfire is a really great way to get honest opinions about college life, and so I really recommend using that also as a tool. You can just ask on there, hey, are these apartments good to live in? Would you recommend these apartments? Why or why not? I didn't mention when you should start doing each of these steps. Let me address that. So step one, I would recommend starting around the middle to end of your freshman year. I would say that's a pretty good start. It's pretty subjective in terms of right picking your preferences. You can kind of do that whenever, but good to get started early. In terms of research and really starting to narrow down apartments, I would say get started before the year ends. So in that November, December, January time, start to do your research on apartments. And I will explain why, because the next step is the housing fair. At UC Davis anyway, we have an annual housing fair and they gather a lot of different apartments that are in Davis and they each have booths. It's in the ARC Pavilion, I believe. You get an opportunity to talk face to face with someone who works at that apartment 
comments so you can really ask them detailed questions. Again, pulling from your preferences list that you've already made, you can ask them specifics about what kind of units do you guys have? Do you have townhouses or flats? What kind of pricing? How far are you from campus? Basically asking about those preferences and seeing which apartments line up with your preferences. Also check for when the actual housing fair will be because I know for us, I believe it was in January or February, I can't really remember. They'll post about it and you'll see it pop up. So I would say just in that time frame, and maybe December, start checking to see when the date of the housing fair is just so you're prepared. But in terms of the actual day of the housing fair, it's really important to come prepared, bring paper to write down any notes, bring some sort of folder to put flyers and pamphlets in, because I know we got bombarded with flyers and pamphlets. Bring a pen so that you can mark up different pamphlets or again, write notes. After the housing fair is done, make sure to update that Google Doc that you made or again, whatever your form of keeping track of things. Make sure to update it after the housing fair because I know for us anyway, we discovered a lot at the housing fair. So it's really important that after the housing fair, you update your preferences. That way you're constantly keeping it updated and getting closer and closer to your actual apartment. Step four is visiting the apartments. So this is definitely a crucial aspect of apartment hunting, obviously, because photos online are really only gonna to give you so much being there in person being able to have your questions answered by someone who works at that apartment is really going to make it easier for you to make a decision I'm gonna tell you right now the photos online for me don't really do anything or say anything about the apartment yes it shows you the layout and how much room you're gonna get in terms of dimensions but that does not mean a lot you want to know how livable the apartment is and how enjoyable it'll be for you at the housing fair I was able to talk to a lot of different apartments and actually schedule tours while I was at the fair, which was pretty cool. And seeing it in person really helps to solidify your decisions. We definitely got this sense of that, you know, even if the place was really nice, but we got to talking with the manager afterwards about additional questions, what other kind of fees are involved, overall pricing, you know, all those sorts of things. We were able to figure out, wow, um, <laughs> maybe this isn't the place. And step five is preparation for move-in. So once you've decided on your apartment, you've done all this hard work, your Google Doc is four pages long, you have finally decided on a place and you're ready to move in. Here are some things that I would sort of give advice to anyone who has never moved into an apartment before and wants to know what the process is kind of like. So for us anyway, our lease was all done online. So the whole thing was sent to us online and we signed it online. I physically just kept a hard copy just for me. I think that is always a good way to go just in case something happens and you need something in hard copy as well as downloading the actual lease as well and just making sure that you have it so you're all good to go you can go back and look at it if they try to charge you for something or try to claim something that you don't believe is true then you have proof in the lease and you have that proof from right when you signed it rather than if they made any amendments right and you go back and look online and suddenly it looks a little different right you have everything in writing at the time that you signed it but we did give them our security deposit in person we used a check we did not have to pay the first and last month's rent we just had to pay the first month's rent our rate was actually prorated because we moved in right at the very end of August so they charged us a little bit for August and then that was the only thing that was due the day that we moved in. They may ask for background checks, credit checks. Background checks are pretty standard, I would say. I feel like most places do background checks, but credit checks are a little bit unique because we are so close to college. They know that a lot of us don't really have a lot of credit because we're just currently college students and many of us don't have credit cards or have accumulated much credit. So they really don't, I, I think for us, I don't think they did a credit check on us, to be honest. I think I asked that because there's just not a whole lot there for many of us. In terms of our security deposit, we are in a two bedroom, one bath, and our security deposit was $800. So I've heard from other people different prices and things like that. Um, yeah, that's how much we paid. Definitely a lot to pay right up front. So make sure you are financially a little bit ready before moving because there's definitely a lot of those kinds of things that are sort of a one-time deal after you start to move in those things go away but make sure to budget some extra money right before moving going back to the security deposit we actually had a checklist of things when we moved in to make sure that everything was okay in the apartment and we weren't liable for anything after we moved out because let me tell you they are really trying to scam out here <laughs> and they're really trying to take your security deposit when there's nothing wrong with your apartment so don't let them scam you make sure that you take photos of the apartment make sure you accurately if they do give you a checklist fill out that checklist so that you're not held liable for anything that you didn't break or you didn't do 
so um, I'm making a feature on the end of Tia's videos because there's been a lot of requests asking for me. Thank you for watching Tia's video, and if you want to see more of me, then um, like press the, the like button. <laughs> press the like button, or press the dislike button. <laughs> Tell Just us so that we know. Video Just we so can like decipher who likes the video but who likes them. Yeah. Right. right. Give us a ratio. Actually, please don't do that. <laughs> Bev might make an appearance in another one of my videos, so... And she might take a leading role, so... Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Because <laughs> I always complain about not being a video. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. Like we said, if you liked it, make sure to give it a like. Don't forget to subscribe and share this video with your friends if any of them will find them helpful. Point blank. Period. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good!